How's it going everyone? I'm Gypsy, you're watching Broken Dolly TV, and we are going to just jump right into this analysis that I wanted to do of the newest Barbie look dolls that are supposedly dropping. <sighs> I gotta take these glasses off. Every time I start a video with my glasses on, I keep forgetting that there's a reflection in my glasses, so it's not gonna work, but for some reason I keep trying to do it. Uh, yeah, it has to be problems. But I need my glasses because I can't see, okay? Anyways, um, we're gonna dive into my analysis of these dolls and what to expect from the dolls, my predictions for these dolls, and my overall take on these dolls without having seen them in person yet. So first, let's talk about this line altogether. If this line is what it's being promoted as so far because all we have are leaked images of the dolls and speculators we don't have anything official from mattel talking about these dolls in this line because they're supposed to be dropping within the next month or two i don't know why that is but whatever mattel picks and chooses when they decide that they're gonna like go in and bring attention to their newest products <laughs> it's all it's like there's no rhyme or reason behind it okay so we've established that we haven't heard anything official from Mattel yet. I have not seen any big doll tubers like Froggy, you know, the usual folks, right? That normally have like the dolls ahead of time. They send it to them and those people will have the dolls before they even like are released in stores. I haven't really seen anything like that. No hype from Mattel specifically, not even on their website. All we have to go on is these leaked photos and my source for the leaked photos are on this website, You Love It, which right now seems to be the only place where you can even find information about these dolls or images of them. And another thing that I thought was a little bit interesting was that the way that the dolls are described on this website, when you go to the Amazon links that are up on this person's website, it's the exact same wording that they use on the Amazon listings for these dolls. And for some time, there weren't even any pictures associated with those listings. So of course, the listings exist, but the dolls are not available. They have not been released yet. And the closest thing you're going to get to is maybe pre-ordering it if you catch it fast enough. But I don't know how legit that pre-ordering even is. It's six dolls in this line, two males and four females. And... They are all being basically marketed with black and white color scheme for their outfits. All of the outfits, from what I can see, they look like new designs of clothes. I don't see like duplicates of styles that we've already seen in other fashions that came on dolls before. Just the cut of the clothing to me looks very unique, like they did it just for this line. I heard some people comparing these dolls to like an upgraded version of the BMR line because there are rumors that the third wave of BMR dolls got canceled. Then all of a sudden this secret shift happens and then these dolls pictures get leaked. So is that a coincidence or is there something behind that? We haven't heard anything from Carlisle Nuera on his Instagram page um, divulging any clues or hints as to whether or not that's true. If it is true, I, it's not that surprising to me because we've seen Barbie do this before with the sewing style dolls and other lines where it starts to become very, very popular amongst the adult fans of the collecting community and the attention that we're bringing to it, it's almost like too much attention almost. You would think a company would be happy about getting all this free like notoriety and publicity from their fans, but I don't know what it is. It's just the trend of, that I've seen over the years with Mattel. Anytime a line gets that big and it's not oozing with a bunch of white dolls with blonde hair, it seems like they get kind of nervous about it and they like to drive this narrative that ethnic dolls don't sell as well as blonde hair blue eyed barbie and that's their excuse for why for years they have been acting like they're not gonna bother producing different um face sculpts and skin tones and hair textures of the ethnic looking dolls just because sales don't reflect their need to do that now since the Doll Evolves campaign has come out, I don't know why so many of our collectors kind of acted like that hasn't happened before or we're like just in denial about it or don't really talk about it publicly. But this was actually going on, you guys, just a few years ago. So like it didn't stop, it didn't go anywhere just because now they're giving us a little bit more skin tones. The narrative of 
the black dolls are not as popular and they don't sell as well. That narrative, that doesn't that didn't disappear. Like Mattel never came out and retracted that. So let's keep that in mind as we progress while we're exploring these um, newer lines of dolls and getting all overly excited about things like BMR line coming out with all this diversity. Big up to people like Carlao Noeta who make it their personal business. Like with intent, they're creating dolls that showcase the diversity. Big up to them, but let's just remember that Mattel as a company has been doing this, uh, shifting the availability of certain dolls that we would consider diverse to push this storyline that diverse dolls don't sell as well. So I'm a little concerned about that when I look at this line because it's like, is it too good to be true? What's the catch? Why are you being so secretive about it? Let's just look at each doll individually. So to start off, I wanna talk about the boys. The most impactful thing I think in this line is that we have males with made to move joints in just a normal regular Ken's body type, not the big buff Superman body, right? I have a few of these made to move bodies for my males that I've done head swaps with some of them that came with those bodies from the BMR line because that was the first line that gave us these bodies in the regular male body type. And in handling these bodies, my overall thought on them is that they are amazing. I love, I love, I love. They're my favorite body type for males with joints because I think they have superior articulation, especially compared to any of the play line slash like collectible dolls that are available. So Integrity Toys males, they do have articulation as well, but their articulation is a lot more limited compared to the Made to Move Barbie Ken articulation. Even compared to just a regular Ken body that had articulation before MTM, the Integrity bodies are a little more stiff and their necks don't have like a pivotal joint in them. So the boys can only move their heads like this side to side, but they can't tilt. So that's a huge bummer considering that most of these dolls are over a hundred bucks and the males go for more than the female dolls too a lot of times. And then on top of that, the ethnic males even harder to get a hold of, right? To me, that stands out right away that they have this dark chocolate complexion for their male doll in this line and we've been asking for darker males with mtm joints for the longest the concern that i have here is that they didn't start the line off with the medium brown tone which is like the yellow top brown tone for their males because people have been needing the texas a m aa versions body like for years now to the point where that body is like in the hundreds of dollars on ebay and third parties if you can even find one, right? It's one of the most common skin shades for our male Barbie heads that we need body donors for. So I feel like that's a little bit of a concern because it feels like the colors that we really need the most, they always wait to the last minute until like people start losing interest and outspoken collectors online, whether it's Instagram, other social media, or even YouTube. When we start putting up a stink, that's when they like, finally reluctantly will give us a, a shade that we're insisting we've needed for months for years right i think there's maybe one or two other male dolls that could use this skin tone that's come out since texas anim ken we still have more of that skin tone that needs these bodies than this darker skin shade so, but i'm not gonna sweat it because i just like the whole like stilo of the doll like i think just him in general would be a really great character to add to most people's collection so if you had to just kind of start from scratch and just build up your male collection from this point on this would be a good addition the other male which is the blonde haired ken he i hope is just a regular ken complexion like a regular caucasian default ken skin tone which is the same as barbie skin tone and he has that skin tone. He already came with his own articulated body, but I wanted to put him on a made to move body. And so far, none of my made to move Kens who have Caucasian skin tones match his face because they're either too dark or they're too light. I'm hoping at the very least that Ken is just a regular white boy because I need those bodies. And I think a lot of us who have a already built up collection of Ken dolls over the years could totally use this body as a donor if it's that shade if he comes out to turn out to be like some weird pink color like this bmr ken with the red hair was like i will be so disappointed both kens have rooted hair and it looks like the black guy is gonna have 
basically the man bun hairstyle, but they're gonna give him braids, like rooted braids, like the BMR Blasian doll had. And then it looks like the sides are shaved. I can't really tell so much from the pictures whether or not his sides are flocked. So I need my glasses, okay? See if this make it better. He's wearing the all white outfit, which reminds me a lot of the Texas a and Ken's look. But one of the things I really like about this line is that none of the clothes have the gaudy Barbie logo on it or any other writing or graphics. And so it leaves the clothing completely up to interpretation for us to customize or do whatever we want with them and mix match with other pieces in our wardrobes for our dolls because it's so hard to come across basic colors on Barbie clothing that you can match with everything else, whatever else you have in your closet, which a lot of it is prints and colors, y'all, right? So let's move on to the girls. First, we're gonna look at the platinum blonde who is considered the tall Barbie of this lineup and she is wearing a short mini dress with her shoulders exposed it just looks kind of retro to me her face up is very simple but what stands out about her of course is that she's got the tall body type her facial features the features do not look familiar to me she looks the most similar to like a mermaid sculpt maybe it is the mermaid sculpt although something about the face sculpt looks like it's just one feature short of a mermaid sculpt. It almost looks like a, like a cross between mermaid and Carl. And I don't know if it's either one of those sculpts. It doesn't look like it to me, but that's just the sculpt that she reminds me of. I don't recognize this head sculpt as any particular sculpt. So if you guys recognize it, drop it in the comments. I tend to obsess over face sculpts and trying to figure out which one is which when I get confused. I've been looking, but I have not found any information to confirm whether this head is actually one of the existing sculpts by Barbie. If it is a new head sculpt, they did a good job. I like it a lot. I love that she has very light blue colored eyes to go with her platinum blonde hair. That's a shade of blonde that we haven't seen in a while, except for some previous releases of Fashionistas dolls that had skipper head sculpts. Some of them had platinum blonde hair tones because they usually had like the black roots. Like she just looks like a pure platinum blonde girl. Like I love that she has long hair. It looks like the texture of the hair is gonna be our usual high quality saran. And she's just wearing a dress and some boots. The boots don't look Look like nothing spectacular or anything new they just look like a style i probably have seen before overall she's just well put together crisp clean look and i'm cool with that next one we're gonna look at is the brown doll who has the i want to say the yellow top made to move dolls complexion and she's got a little afro puff for her hairstyle the afros are starting to get kind of old to be honest it's not the texture it's just the styling they just kind of just default to this big poof and then that's the end of it and of course of course that's the signature look for anyone rocking an afro so i understand it but come on you could style it a little bit you could give her a hair clip you would give her a headband they tried with this one because you see she has a side part so that's a plus if the doll actually ends up looking like this prototype then that will be great she doesn't look like she has a lot of length in the fro which is also another way that they've kind of switched it up because a lot of the dolls that came with froze lately have been these gymongous mounds of hair on their head they just take up a lot of space overall around the doll her face though let's look at her face what is the sculpt you guys i've never seen the sculpt before she does not look familiar this is not selma it's not pazette like these are not the usual signature black faces that we've seen being used over and over again for our black characters by barbie i don't recognize it she's got some very juicy lips they almost look like they're puckered from a distance even though i'm sure they aren't just the face up like I don't know it's so simple but they really made her look like a person she looks real the outfit that she's wearing another really brilliant choice she's got a one piece but instead of making them like the usual rompers that they have the, the pants part of it is long covering her entire body on the lower half but then it's tight it's snug it fits her shape she's clearly got the curvy body type and it's accentuating the curves of that body flawlessly and she's got, it looks like silver boots. I'm not sure if that's actually silver or maybe white. And just the way that the light is hitting it, it's coming off metallic to me. Just the aesthetic of the entire look is very crisp, very crisp. And I can tell with this line that the intention was absolutely for them to be a set and for them to go together 
and you can display these dolls exactly the way they come straight out the box onto the stand onto your shelves without doing anything else to them you don't have to customize them you don't have to head, head swap them you don't have to change their clothes they look like they're ready to be posed immediately. I appreciate that about this because it really looks like somebody put an adult collector's mindset as the first and foremost priority as they were designing this line. I don't know who the designer is. Again, we don't have any information on that right now. And if you hear anything by the time you watch this video, then definitely leave it in the comments because I would like to know. She reminds me a little bit of my doll that I call Kendra after Frosty from Seasonal Frostbite, shout out. Um, she reminds me of her. Like she almost looks like an upgraded version of her. Like this doll looks a lot more like the actual Kendra, the real woman who runs Seasonal Frostbite's YouTube channel. She looks more like her in person than the doll that I call Kendra that reminds me of her. <laughs> so this is amazing that she just looks like a real girl to me. I love okay. that. So then the um, next one here, one of my um, dolly friends, Bradney, shout out. She told me that this doll reminded her of me for some reason, but I can kind of see it. It's the nose, I think. So this one is the Asian one of the group, and she has a short hairstyle, which we haven't seen a hairstyle like this in quite some time. I don't even know if we've seen it at all recently. And she's got flocking along the side. So this part is all shaved, and then she's just got like a little swoop here. And I'm very interested to see how the hair looks from the back because one of the things I've been noticing about the dolls, whether it's male dolls or female dolls, that they do the part shaved look with hair rooted in, there's always some like little surprise when it comes to the way the hair is rooted that you don't notice until you turn the doll's head around to the back. I'm not a fan of this hairstyle on a female doll. I'm just not. I'm not a fan of this hairstyle on women, like in real life walking around. Um, the pixie short haircut. Long hair looks better on women. That's just my personal opinion. I don't think it's ugly, but it's just not a preference. I, I'm a little perturbed by her short hair, but in the interest of diversity, because there are real women that wear their hair this way and they like it, and a lot of them do look really good in it, I'm okay with this hairstyle being rocked on the little Asian doll. Today's Asian girls, I feel like, are becoming more and more liberated and more daring with their hairstyles and you know for a long time asian girls have been just going in with dyeing their hair and almost every color looks good on them even though naturally most of them are born with brown or black hair they've gotten pretty bold with their hair and i feel like this doll's a good representation of today's modern asian girl who will go so far as to chop all her hair off and really just style it in a way that's completely taboo in their culture like oh my god you cut all your hair off it's very shocking for some of these cultures to see women in that way this is a good depiction of what it might look like if a girl actually decided to do this which a lot of them are doing now as far as the diversity is concerned absolutely i'm with that she would be a good candidate for some experiments with um rooting longer hair into the head since she doesn't have that much hair on the head to even get rid of so as for her body type clearly she's a petite doll they have her in the pictures where the full lineup is they have her a little bit blown up so she looks like she's the same height as the other dolls when she, they're all lined next to each other but when you get these dolls in person you'll see that there is definitely a discrepancy in how the pictures make them look because obviously the blonde doll she's going to be the tallest out of all of these girls and the boys will be about the same height as the blonde one the rest of the three girls that are left will be at differing heights because their body types are different. Curvy doll and the petite doll will be slightly shorter than the other girls because their body types just naturally are. Keep that in mind as you're looking at the pictures that have leaked. Again, I do not recognize this face. So far, based on what we've been looking at, it looks like all of these dolls have their own facial sculpts. They're brand new facial sculpts. We haven't seen them no place else. This is the first of the first of the first. So if that is true, if they truly have been sculpted exclusively for this line, this is a huge plus, absolutely a moment in Barbie history that I am so glad that I'm here to take part in. And those of you who are serious collectors, I would suggest y'all adding these dolls to your collection because we don't know if we're gonna run into these faces again, when we're gonna run into these face sculpts again, and what level of affordability the next dolls that have these face sculpts are gonna end up being. They could be high-end collector type dolls, 
or they could be ending up on fashionistas. We don't know. So <laughs> at this point, it's like, why take the chance? If you see them, just get them, right? Yeah, I don't think you're gonna regret having these heads. So I love that. I love her unique face sculpt. She's really cute. I think she's really pretty. And the again, the face up is very simple, very everyday makeup look. Um, just clean, fresh faces, and you can just see the sculpt. You can see the beauty of the sculpt. Her outfit, she's got the black and white going on, and the two-piece where she's got the, you know, the bottom is a skirt, the top is like a tank top, and she's got some cute little some sliders on. That, that, those shoes don't look like everyday shoes that I've seen on most playline level dolls. She's definitely on a petite body, so I don't know what skin tone she's supposed to be. She looks a little pinkish in the pictures but we can't really tell from looking at the pictures a hundred percent when i look at these dolls in the pictures anyway the platinum blonde one looks like she's gonna end up being purple tops skin tone so i wouldn't be surprised if this asian doll who looks like a different skin tone from her has that pinkish kind of a tone that we saw on the bmr red hair guy the life in the dream house midge dolls they had that pinky skin tone if she is that skin tone though that's not a negative because we had a couple of dolls, like Midge, for example, that we could not give made-to-move bodies to because we don't have any bodies that fit that skin tone. Even just a regular standard articulated body, those bodies are really hard to come by. So some of us have previous waves of fashionistas dolls that were that skin tone that are just, they ain't got no joints because we don't have no bodies to put them on. So I'm hoping if this is not a pale skin tone that it matches that skin tone at least we can have some variety in some of our dolls that need these bodies the hispanic skin tone doll she looks like she might be similar to orange top made to move but possibly also um blue top made to move somewhere in between maybe i don't know her face is probably my favorite of all of the girls in this line she looks just very sultry, very sexy look, grown up. She looks like, she kind of reminds me of the Integrity Toys doll's faces, how they just look very like demure, right? She also reminds me a lot of like a very grown Skipper face sculpt, but I don't think that it is Skipper. When I look at this picture, I'm not really seeing Skipper's face. She just reminds me of if Skipper grew up and she was like in her 30s, like this is what she might look like. Very sophisticated skipper to me. So the fact that she reminds me of a more sophisticated skipper is not a bad thing. Skipper's really pretty. She has wavy hair, wavy brunette hair with some highlights in it, in blonde it looks like. She also has a two-piece outfit. The shoes don't look familiar to me. The outfit itself, the pieces in the outfit do not look familiar to me. I'm totally for most of these dolls coming with two-piece outfits, the ones that are wearing skirts. I would have liked to see them in pants more than skirts because I think we are very lacking in outfits containing pants for our Barbie dolls. And pants are a little more versatile, I think, especially when you're trying to pose your dolls. Sometimes the skirts, it's kind of, you have to be too aware of being able to see the doll's crotch when she's sitting, right? Because Barbies don't usually wear underwear. When we're posing them and even, not even on camera, just when you're just posing them around their sets, their dollhouse, your backdrop, your diorama, whatever, just in your house, sitting positions are a little bit tricky when the dolls are wearing skirts. And this is the one that I believe has the regular body type, just the original body type. So she's not tall, she's not curvy, she's not petite. She's just normal Barbie's body type with joints. Overall, I'm excited for this line. According to this website, they're claiming that the tentative release date for these dolls are sometime in June and that's right around the corner. So I hope that these dolls are released on time and that we are able to find them pretty easily. Lately, I've been noticing that some of the really cool dolls, they're not even available on Barbie's own website, which I don't understand. We need for Mattel to make their dolls available on their website in a timely fashion when they're still new. <laughs> I don't know who's in charge of that or why they do this, but y'all need to get it together over there if y'all trying to sell your dolls, okay? I love that they have at least two dedicated black skin tones in this line. Even the Hispanic looking doll, she can easily pass for some kind of a mixed black person like me. She could be many different races. Always exciting when we can tell 
more diverse character stories by presenting dolls that look like they could be from different parts of the world and different cultures. I love that even like Filipina, she could she could pass for one of those kinds of Asians. It's very versatile and I love it. I love the platinum blonde girl. She just, she doesn't look like a boring, ordinary American white girl. She looks like she could be also from some other country like Sweden, Dutch, German. So many different races she could be from deep, deep in the recesses of Europe, even Russian. Like I love that. And she could totally get away with having an accent. And even though she's wearing a dress, which I don't normally like, I like the cut of this dress. I like that it's pretty fitted looking. And I like the retroness of it. I feel like whoever designed these dolls did put a lot of thought into how they were presenting each character. They just have a lot of versatility. I didn't go into depth about the boys' outfits, but I do love that they're all one color. The black guy has a white outfit. The white guy has a black outfit. I love the contrast there. And I love that the blonde haired guy, his pants, they almost look like leather. Like his outfit really does remind me of a slightly watered down version of something you might see an Integrity Toys male doll wearing. So I like the, the style, the joints. I mean, you can't go wrong with these joints, you guys. Because of all the new head sculpts and the style of it, I feel like they are ready to go straight out the box right onto your display shelves. They're also good dolls for people to stock up on if they need potential body donors especially the males and i can already see some of our favorite doll tubers gearing up to get six seven ten of each of these male dolls as body donors to stock up on because some of you guys be really going in don't be surprised if you see them constantly getting sold out very quickly pricing price for these dolls are going to be 20 us dollars it's refreshing that they decided to give all of the dolls joints of made to move caliber and I'm totally with it and I'm totally into them styling them in such a way that they're not apologizing for these joints because there's a lot of controversy because they don't like the aesthetic of the joints even though they are functional and they allow the dolls to pose in many different ways these people usually just keep their dolls in a standard model pose on their shelves so they don't have a need for them to be super jointed they were bold enough to just say oh, to heck with it we're gonna give them joints we're gonna put them in sleeveless stuff like we don't care these are for the first time that i've come across a line of dolls that i so totally wouldn't mind leaving them as is for a short period of time to display them and enjoy them the way that they came straight out of the box I'm normally one of these people, I cannot stand to see my dolls in boxes. I know I'm not gonna wanna see them in their boxes, I'm gonna take them out. Once they're out of the box, I almost immediately change the doll from her original condition and alter her in some way. Even if it's not the actual doll itself, I will change their clothing, I will always take them out of their original clothes. I detest seeing my dolls in their original state because I don't feel like I'm bonding with the doll or like really, personalizing it until I put my touch on the dolls. It's just, that's just how I am. And I've always been that way with my dolls, my toys, everything. Like I have to, I can't do it. Like even like clothes when I buy them, like I don't, I can't stand to see the tags on my clothes. Even if I've never worn them anywhere, like I have to take the tags off. That's just how I am. For someone like me to be saying, as neurotic as I am when it comes to this stuff, that I don't mind them staying in their original clothing for a short period of time and like being on display like that in my house, that's pretty monumental. I really, really, really am digging the aesthetic of these dolls. I love the plain black and white look. I'm happy that they're not all dressed in white and they're not all dressed in black because that would have felt really boring to me. And with the Barbie Basics dolls, that's kind of how they did them. They all had one color spectrum and they just kept them that way. Everybody was wearing black dresses and that was very boring looking to me. And then on top of that, they've got made to move joints. Like, is there a Barbie God over there listening to my Barbie prayers? Like what's going on? I don't, I don't understand how. Just they're so accurate. I don't know, but I'm not gonna complain about that. You feel me? So if these guys are really $20, that means not only are they cheaper than the Barbie Extra dolls that are starting at 25 with inferior joints, they're only $5 more than the standard made to move yoga dolls that don't even come with shoes half the time. Even if these dolls are not being sold with any extra accessories or clothing items, and they literally are coming to us just like this, even if they came in a plastic bag, not like a regular box that looks all fancy schmancy. I mean, like the fashionista zip bag that they have been doing lately. I so would not complain about them being $20. That's my take, that's my opinion. What do you guys think? 
Do any of the predictions that I'm making sound like I'm just reaching or what do you agree with that I suggested and then what do you disagree with and if you've heard anything different since I filmed and uploaded this video that will give us more accurate information prior to these dolls being released please tell me if you know anybody who actually has the doll in person and they're showing the dolls on camera leave a link in the comment section so i can go and check out their video and so other people can go and check out their video as well and speaking of i hope those of you who watched my doll event video previously about the wave two barbie extra dolls that are supposed to be dropping soon if not already i hope you guys went over to Artie Artie's channel that i linked on that video to drop her a comment let her know that i sent you over there and go leave some nice comments over there if you haven't yet but if you're curious about those dolls she has them in person she's in Malaysia she's showing them to you in her reviews so go over there and check her videos out please and uh, let her know that I sent you over there I know when I did the Barbie extras wave 2 doll events video I told you guys that I will be looking forward to adding those dolls because it seemed like they were an improvement from wave 1 however because these dolls are supposed to be dropping around the same time. They're all summer releases. Like, honestly speaking, I would rather save my money to spend them on these dolls and get one of each at least than to wait for the Barbie Extra dolls to come out and spend it on them. Those Barbie Extra dolls, I feel like I would have to do a little bit more sprucing with them. Probably end up looking for some body donors because the ones that I like the most, I'm going to want them on different bodies. Every single one of the dolls in the Barbie Extra Wave 2 series, I already have at least one head sculpt of those dolls. If I can have brand new head sculpts for a few dollars cheaper with Made to Move bodies, why would I pass that up to get the Barbie Extras dolls? These feel more like they're catering to an adult crowd, whereas the Barbie Extras are more catering towards like young teenage girls, I feel like. Knowing Adonis, of course, he was probably gonna end up getting me all of them because he wants me to be happy and he doesn't want me to go without having any particular doll if I don't have to miss it but I always try to prioritize which ones I'm gonna get first just in case they sell out or they're unavailable or the prices get jacked up and let me know if you enjoyed this video by hitting the like button I hope you have decided to subscribe if you came here for the first time we do doll events videos every so often where we just talk about the latest news in one six scale dolls in general not always talking about Barbies but basically fashion dolls we like to get analytical over here we're not gonna just be like yay they're so pretty ah they're cute woohoo subscribe we just we don't do that here we try to analyze and break things down as much as we can and get really deep into these conversations because after all we're not little kids we are actually adults that collect these dolls and some of us put a little bit of thought into our collection and what it's representing for us and what we're expressing through our collection back here i have seraphina my poppy parker doll and I have Amadeus, my grail male doll. This is a Barbie Captain Jack Sparrow doll. So he's got Johnny Depp's face mold. He's gorgeous. Right here in the mid though, this is my latest acquisition. And this is the Lunar New Year Barbie who has the Mari head sculpt. And I didn't really do a details video on her because I didn't think it was necessary. There's so many other reviews of this doll if you want to go check her out. I named her Nano after one of my favoritest characters on the Netflix show Girl From Nowhere. You guys should watch that show if you're into like horror. If you want to check out some of our merch, it's designed by my son Jinu. He is an artist. He designed all the graphics that are available. And go ahead and check out our merch shop and support our channel. I'll talk to you guys later. Make sure you subscribe, like, blah, 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 blah. And you can follow me over on Instagram as well. See you next time. Have a dolly day.